And I gave, oh, you mean me? <laughs> oh, it'd be so nice. Hey guys, it's your girl Melanie. And I thought I would come on real quick too, because I came across this clip on Instagram uh, that I think uh, makes for an interesting topic. So let's take a look. But I like the fact that I have this personality because I know how to stand my ground when necessary. Does it and serve you well? It does, absolutely. Because people who truly care about me and understand me know that I'm just standing up for myself and I know how to speak and articulate myself properly. Mm-hmm. People, on the other hand, get quickly intimidated by that because they don't have the same ability to speak for themselves the way that I do. I, do you know, I would say I don't think it's intimidation. I would say it is acknowledgement of the fact that they're not willing to engage with aggressive behavior. And so a lot of the time... So that is intimidation. No, no, no. 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 It's not. It's actually smart. <laughs> it's a wise decision. It's actually wise, yeah, it's actually a wise uh, decision. So it's like if somebody keeps bringing aggressive behavior to, to me, mm. as a man, I would say, I have to make a decision as to whether or not I am going to deal with that. And mm. I'll be like, you know what? Nine times out of ten, yep. especially if it comes from a woman, yep. I ain't willing to deal with it. Yep. But here's but the you, thing. But, is but that the thing I'm is, on your side, you might see that as me being intimidated by yeah. you. Yeah. I'm just saying, listen, I hear you're aggressive and I can see you're aggressive, but you know what? Yeah. Go give that to yeah, someone there else. Is, there is nation, I, ain't, but I ain't got time for there it. There is a nation. So what's funny about this, I recently had a conversation with um, a woman about this, about how she really believes that a lot of men are intimidated by women. And I know a lot of women like to use that kind of language, like he's intimidated me. They can't take all this. They can't deal with all this. And the reality is they're not intimidated. I think some people have are so toxic or were raised in toxic environments or they're so used to having toxic behavior. They think their aggression okay, is normal. They have normalized being aggression, especially with women. Specifically, this is what what I'm going to talk about. Like she really felt empowered by that statement that men are, you know, uh, intimidated by her because for the most part, the sisterhood won't will tell her, "Girl, you right. They are. These men can't take it. They they scared. They you know they can't get up on my level." And this attitude you take on, and usually it's the result of trauma. It's the result of whether it's through childhood or whether it's through bad choices in dating, whatever it is. It's an inflated view of self. It's ego, and it's a it's, I'm not saying you're a narcissist, but it's narcissistic to think that you're just too much that, you know, it's almost like I'm above people. And a lot of times they don't really think of it like that. They really think it's a point of pride. But if a man was to say that about women, it'd be, he'd be crucified. He'd be taken down. Nobody is scared of you, sis. Nobody's intimidated by you, sis. And as we can see, the man speaking to her directly but, you know, the other guy chimed in, but that one man, did you feel that alpha presence about him? Did you feel how when he shut her down, he wasn't rude, he wasn't mean, he wasn't aggressive, but you could actually physically see her become more intimidated. And so we're going to look at this again, and I want to see if you guys can catch this, because what she was giving out was just a bunch of bravado. She was just using these talking points, and she's probably used to yelling, screaming, and being aggressive, so a person doesn't even want to deal with your foolishness, because they're normal. They 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 are, especially men, men are not going to want to deal with it. An alpha male, a male who knows what he's doing, a male who knows who he is, he's on his square, he, he, like, he don't have to deal with you. So you think, oh, he's backing down because he can't deal, he can't deal, he's intimidated me with me. No, he wants nothing to do with you, sis, because you're aggressive and it's masculine. And you really think you're saying something, you proving something, and we all scared because we can't get up on your level. No, sis, we don't want to deal with you because you're toxic, toxic and masculine and domineering, and uh you have an inflated ego and in view of oneself. So let's take a look at it as you can see her kind of shrink away even when she tried to interrupt him and he was, he just, he raised his voice before she can even let the temperature boil. And I just want to point out something after that. So let's watch it. Um, but I like the fact that I have this personality because I know how to stand my ground when necessary. Does it and serve you well? It does. Absolutely. Because people who truly care about me and understand me know that I'm just standing. So did you hear what he said at first? So what you may not pick up on it, he's actually sowing that seed of doubt in her head as soon as she says it and then he's she's having to justify but he's already knows that this is cap she's just bsing she's just on code she's just delusional thinking that someone's actually intimidated um and he he cut through when she was talking right away um with that seed of doubt which is very important when you are establishing dominance 
in a uh, conversation, that person says something that is, you know, is cap or outrageous. Then when you ask a question, while they're in mid thought, they have to quickly adjust to try to, you know, uh, prove this or show this, or they be, they get on the, the defensive. They're already seeing someone's questioning them. Someone's doubting what they're, what they're saying. They're not just accepting it. And so a person who is used to being toxic and being able to get their way through and through, oh, and making you intimidate it, when they're challenged like that, it already knocks them off their square because they already know it's it, it intrinsically she knows she's lying. Intrinsically she knows she's making this up. Intrinsically she she knows she's having to defend her personality. This whole conversation is defending why she has a toxic personality or a toxic behavior. Because she's having to justify, I like the way I am because, you know, it, it weeds out, I'm able to, you know, uh, weed out and it, so people aren't, I, you know, and it intimidates people, whatever she's saying is nonsense. I don't quite listen to it, but, uh, let's continue. Standing up for myself and I know how to speak and articulate myself properly. Mm -hmm. People on the other hand, get quickly intimidated by that because they don't have the same ability to speak for themselves the way that I do. I, you know wow. Did you see that? So she's saying people, we, no one else has the ability to speak up for themselves. She really believes this, this is the delusions of grandeur. And this is where you see a lot of narcissism because she actually is putting down all people. No one else knows how to stand up for themselves other than her because her specific personality allows her to do it. She doesn't even entertain the possibility that maybe she's doing it wrong. Maybe if everyone else feels this certain way about her, that it's her, that's the issue. Her personality is not intimidating. It's the fact that she's toxic. And so that's not, doesn't even occur to her. It's like the problem can't be with me. It's with all these people and no one else has my magical, my magical ability to, to stand up for themselves and articulate themselves. That's, this is what she's saying. Essentially. She knows it's cap. But she has to stay on code because to pop the bubble, it means that you're going to have to face yourself, look in the mirror, say, this is what's wrong with me. I mean, the fact that you really think so that anybody, it, who is intimidated by you, sis? We don't know you. We don't care to know you. Like, what about you is intimidating? Like, like really think of it. Are you, you do you think you, you're just so fine? You just so smart? You just so successful? What is it that we're supposed to be intimidated by I mean we're grown adults and I, I I feel no intimidation for you in fact I think you're delusional so but the fact that she's putting it out there like that you see what that was and she really had to justify it. and that's see you guys are going to have to I know I have a huge male audience so when I say you guys I'm talking to men and women okay <laughs> but I want to say you know when I say you guys, it's everyone, but you guys are going to have to start picking up. I'm doing a lot of work right now, just learning how to pick up different cues for mental illness, for um, different type of personality disorders, all types of things. And you can, when you start to see it, you can see right there, just that statement alone. When you go out with somebody and they talk like that, no. When they have a thing where everybody's this way and nobody gets me and I have to be this way... Um, you know, and it just intimidates people. That is a huge red flag that you need to run from. This is a person who has no accountability. They don't see themselves. There's no reflection. Um, they feel, uh, they have a lot of pride, a lot of ego, really think they're better than other people. And they see no reason to change. Why do they need to change? They're good the way they are. It's just all these people that have a problem. See, and so many of us were not taught when we were young to pick up on these little cues, these things that people say, we just kind of just take it. Oh, it's just conversation. But the reality is people always tell on themselves. No, I would say I don't think it's intimidation. I would say it is acknowledgement of the fact that they're not willing to engage with aggressive behavior. And so a lot of the time... So that is intimidation. Did you see when he, when he was talking normal and then what he did was when he wanted the point to drive home, he turned and looked at her and he slowed down his speech. So right there, he set in the cadence two things. Number one, slowing down his speech. He knows she has an aggressive, she's already admitted she's aggressive in the way she speaks to people. She thinks it's some, she's some high and lofty thing we're just intimidated about. No, sis, we just want you to leave the room and shut up. So 
he automatically, and, and you know, usually people who have those type of personalities, what do they do? They got to start screaming. You think of Real Housewives, you think of all these type of reality shows where people are screaming and, and women are ratcheting it up and, and talking louder and louder and louder, faster and faster and faster. No one can hear each other. You know, and soon they're just yelling across the room. It's just, there's nothing focused. So what he did was he slowed the cadence down when he knew he was going to hit her with something she wouldn't want to hear or that she was going to deny. Okay, so it's very important to pick this up. And then what he what did he do? Number two, he so he set the tone right there. He set the tone. He wasn't going to allow her to dominate that conversation. He wasn't going to speak in her same cadence and her same tone. He spoke. He was speaking faster. He lowered his voice and started speaking slower. That's number one. Number two, he turned and looked her in the eye. Because he wanted to show, I'm not intimidated by you. There's nothing about you that I feel fearful, unsure of myself about. In fact, I'm sure about you. Uh, and what you're saying is cap. And so this is a man who's exuding extreme confidence. So this is a man who, by doing that, this is an alpha presence right away. Okay? Especially speaking to a woman. And as you can see, it has a great effect on her. You can see her almost shrink away as they continue. But I want you to, I think a lot of people don't take note of that, but I noticed this right away. No, no, no. no. <laughs> it's not. It's actually smart. It's a wise decision. It's actually wise, yeah, it's actually a wise uh, decision. So it's like, if somebody keeps bringing aggressive behavior to, to me, yeah. as a man, I would say, I have to make a decision as to whether or not I am going to deal with that. And I'll be like, you know what, nine times out of ten, yep. especially if it comes from a woman, yep. I ain't willing to deal with it. Yep. But here's but the thing. Okay, so you see how when she, he started talking, did you see that nod of agreement, that, that subconscious nod of agreement? She knows what he's saying is correct when it comes specifically to him. She knows that that's right. So she told on herself right there was she that right there she just admitted through her actions that that was capped. Now, this is cognitive dissonance. It's where you can have two opposing thoughts at the same time. You know what is right. You know what's truthful. But you've been living this lie and you've told yourself this lie so long. And you sold yourself this lie. You have to fight back. As you can see, though, she's not ratcheting up her her tone, her behavior. None of that. She's she's actually, you know, well, letting them speak. And then she she's about to do her comeback. But she has to. That's part of the program. And that's part of where she is. But notice he's still speaking in a calm cadence. The other man piped in as well, same tone. Both men are setting a presence in the room by speaking in a deeper voice, which is part of their natural voice, but you can learn as a man to lower your tone. You see how I'm speaking lower, but then I can also speak higher and I can even sound really young, okay? So people are amazed that I can do that. And I can, oh, you mean me? <laughs> oh, it'd be so nice. I can speak like that. I can speak in my normal voice. And then when I want to drive something home, I can talk much slower. Kind of like Elizabeth Holmes. But, but the thing I'm... is, on your side, you might see that as me being intimidated by yeah. you. Yeah. I'm just saying, listen, I hear you're aggressive and I can see you're aggressive. But you know what? Yeah. Go give that to yeah, someone there else. Is, there is an issue. I, but I ain't got time for there it. Is... So she was going to try to keep keep going at it but at some point the men would just dismiss this what she's saying but i thought this was a good example of the delusion that's out there and some of uh the women out there i rarely hear men say that people are intimidated by them and it's women are intimidated by me and it's a, like a, pr a point of pride um but women will boldly say this and really think it's attractive they really think it's it, it means something and, and it, it, men are going to want to run a run to you because you just so they got to they, they're going to push past this wall of aggression to get to you because you're just this serious prize when really men don't want they want a someone who they could be agreeable someone who doesn't pride themselves in being uh, in opposition of people i mean she said this with her own mouth and they want you know a good man i'm not saying all men but a good man who would who that she would most likely want he's not going to accept that type of aggressive behavior like the man that sat there and said i'll just be like okay on to the next one he's and this is where a lot of times as women we may be getting ghosted we may get played a guy may have show, show high interest the next thing you know he's gone uh, all those things happen and you wonder why a lot of times, I'm not saying there aren't some bad guys out there who just want to do that. Of course there are. 
But that is not the vast majority of the case. If we are finding ourselves as women constantly getting ghosted, men not committing, men ain't ish, men of this, this, that, we're either picking wrong men or there be good men coming our direction, but we have attitudes and mindsets like this that we don't know are pushing the good men that we want away. So let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.